This video is on how to do graphical analysis of a DOE in Quantum Excel. This video is part of the series of DOE. The link to the DOE series is in the description below. The graphical analysis in Quantum Excel is located under QXL DOE charts. There are several analysis that are available. The first one we're going to do is a Pareto of the absolute value of the coefficient. The coefficient is located in the column coefficient in the regression table. If I would like to see the Pareto of the absolute value, I click on QXL DOE ribbon, then charts, then Pareto regression coefficients. Quantum Excel will then ask me the source data for the plots. The default is just the first response, in this case the red distance, but if I would like to create the one for the red distance and the blue distance simultaneously, then I can just click on both of them. And then I check the box under which outputs I would like to plot. By default, Quantum Excel will display all the coefficients. If you would like to abbreviate it to the top end coefficients, you can change that, as well as you can change the orientation of the bars. So for example, I prefer horizontal bars. I will click on horizontal, and then I will click on create an exit. When done, Quantum Excel will create a new worksheet for me in my workbook called Pareto, and you can see that I get a Pareto of the regression coefficients. The bars in the Pareto are color-coded the same color as the p-values. So if the p-value is less than 0.05, it's color-coded red. If the p-value is between 0.05 and 0.1, it's color-coded blue. So for example, we can see that in the A-B interaction for the blue ball. And then if the uh, p-value is greater than 0.1, it will be color-coded black, which is the normal default font color. Additionally, I could do other graphical analysis. So for example, if I want to do an interaction plot, I click on QXL DOE, charts, and then I choose interaction plots. When I click on interaction plots, again, Quantum Excel will ask me the source of the plots. I can choose to do multiple plots simultaneously. In this particular case, I'll keep it simple and only do the red distance Y hat plot. Optionally, I can create multiple charts where it creates all possible interaction plots or a single chart because I only have two variables, they're identical. There's only two variables in the DOE, therefore there's only one two-way interaction plot, and that's going to be the AB interaction. When I click on Create and Exit, you can see that Quantum Excel will create for me the interaction plot between firing angle and cup rotation angle. When I zoom out, you can see that where firing angle is in the rows and firing angle is also in the columns, there is no interaction plot because there is no plot there. However, this is the cup rotation angle um, on the x-axis versus red distance on the vertical axis, uh, and then in series is the firing angle. The way I know that it is the firing angle is that firing angle is in the title, and down here is the legend. So the blue line is for firing angles 110, the red line is for firing angles 120, and the green line is for firing angles 130. The, also the interaction plot for firing angle on the x-axis, and then cup rotation angle in series is in the lower left-hand corner, and you can see that the, when the cup rotation angle is zero, that's the blue line. When cup rotation angle is red, that is at 45, that's the red line. And then when cup rotation angle is at 90, that's the green line. We can also do the graphical analysis of the main effects plots. When I click on main effects plots, Quantum Excel again will ask me the source of the plots, so I can create more than one simultaneously. But I'm going to leave it default as a red distance and then click on create and exit. The main effects plots display for each main effect, in this case there's only two, there's the firing angle and the cup rotation angle, it displays the predicted value when firing angle is 110, and it gives me a prediction of the red distance, and then 120, and then 130. Because this is a three-level DOE, it does low, middle, high. If it's been a two-level DOE, it would only be at the low and the high. And we can see from this plot that firing angle has a strong quadratic relationship with the red distance. And the same thing is done with cup rotation angle, where it's done at the low, middle, and high as well. Additionally, we can click on charts and do a thumbnail plot. A thumbnail plot is a combination of the interaction plots and the main effects plots. So if I click on thumbnail plots, to interpret the thumbnail plot, you'll notice that the main effects are located in rows, so there's firing angle and cup rotation angle, and also in columns, firing angle, cup rotation angle. Where a variable intersects with itself, you get the main effects plot or the marginal means plot like we just did. So for example, this is the firing angle where we have a predicted value with low, middle, and high. And here's the one for the cup rotation angle with a predicted value at low, middle, and high. We just saw that in the previous plot. 
when a variable interacts with a different variable, so for example, this column is firing angle and this row is cup rotation angle, this is the interaction plot between firing angle and cup rotation angle, as well as the one over here is the interaction plot as well. If I would like to create a surface and contour plot, then I just click on charts and then surface and contour plot. Again, we have the option to change the source of the plots, and we can select the factors to plot. In this case, there's only two factors, so I can only choose A versus B. However, if I had more than two variables, I would be able to choose them from a drop-down box and pick which variables to plot. By default, it populates the low and high from the low and high of the DOE. However, if I wanted to create the plot to extrapolate, I could just change the low and or high value to either be extrapolating outside the range or I could narrow down inside the range. So for example, I could plot firing angle from 110 to 120. By default, it creates both the surface and contour plot. If you don't want one, then just uncheck the box and then click on create an exit. When I click on create an exit, Quantum Excel will give me a new tab with the contour plot and another tab with the surface plot. In order to make this present well, I have my font size turned up quite high, so the plot looks a little bit odd on this screen. But this is the contour plot where firing angle is on the x-axis, cup rotation angle is on the vertical axis, and then the distance that the red ball will go is then color-coded with the contours that are displayed on the right. If I go to the surface plot, the surface plot, again, has the same information as the contour plot, but instead of just using color coding, it uses vertical change in order to denote the change in distance. So now the, this x-axis is now firing angle, the, the back, we'll call this the y-axis, is now cup rotation angle, and then let's say this is the z-axis, is now how far the ball goes, and it is still also color coded, much like a contour plot. The last kind of charts that you can do in Quantum Excel is the residual plots. So if I click on charts and click on residual plots, Quantum Excel will ask me first again the source of the plot. So in this case, it's the red distance y hat. You can determine what you want to put on the x axis and what you would like to put on the y axis. So for example, if I would like to plot the main effects, firing angle and cup rotation angle, versus the residual, perhaps also the studentized residual, our studentized residual, and Cook's D, then I, can, I will get eight plots as I will get firing angle and cup rotation angle versus all four forms of those residuals. Before I click on create an exit, note that there's a checkbox in the lower left-hand corner that says create a textual report. If I click on that, in addition to getting the plots, I will get a table that has all the numerical values of the residuals. When I click on create an exit, Quantum Excel makes the residual plot for me. And here you can see the on the x-axis, it has the main effects, firing angle and cup rotation angle. And on the y-axis, I get the residual plot. And I also selected the studentized residual plot, as well as the R studentized residual plot. And then finally, the Cook's D. And if I zoom out, you can see all of the plots simultaneously. Um, it's quite difficult to determine when you're this far zoomed out, so you're going to want to zoom in in order to do your analysis. Quantum Excel also makes the residual report. If you look to the left, there's a tab that says residual report. I'm going to click on that. It gives me the actual residuals where for each run in the design, it gives me the actual Y, predicted Y, leverage, residual, studentized, or studentized, and then the Cook's D. And that is how you perform graphical analysis of a regression table in Quantum Excel.